how does it compare to Katrina, for example? I'm joined now by Professor of Climatology at the Global Change Institute here at Witz University, Professor Francois Engelberg. Good evening, Professor. Thanks very much for your time. Um, talk to me about the storm. Is it a one in a hundred year kind of uh, intense storm? We've seen just from chatting to our correspondent, there has been extensive damage. We're hearing reports of three people dead. Um, but has it been as bad as expected? Good evening, Sunny. Thanks for having me. Yes, um, this is a very intense uh, tropical cyclone, as we call it here in South Africa, hurricane in the United States, a Category 4 hurricane. One needs to go back to 1856 to find a tropical st um, cyclone of similar intensity, making landfall over Louisiana. So it is indeed um, a, a very intense storm, a very dangerous storm. This storm was particularly destructive in terms of the high wind speeds that it caused. So it caused wind speeds in the order of 200 kilometers per hour for several hours, firstly on the, on the coastal areas in Louisiana, and even inland, about 50 kilometers inland at uh, Lake Charles City, wind gusts occurred for several hours at an end uh, of about 200 kilometers per hour. And, and of course, the wind damage is now, is now extensive mm. in southern Louisiana. While we're talking about the path of destruction, you mentioned Lake Charles. We know that uh, Sassel, South African company Sassel, um, has oil and chemical interests there. We understand that they battened down the hatches and evacuated. But we're also hearing reports that parts of Lake Charles are actually underwater. What is the situation in Lake Charles? Are you able to give us more detail? Um, I, I only know what I'm, what I'm reading, I guess, as many other people on, on the Internet. I don't have hands-on information, but from what I'm reading, most of the damage occurred in the form of wind damage. And in terms of the storm surge, it never penetrated as far inland as the warnings indicated about a day ahead of landfall of the storm. So that is a, that is a great escape for Louisiana in that respect. So the storm surge was initially predicted to be, to be about three to five meters high in some of the coastal areas, and um, it can move inland several tens of kilometers. So it seems right now as if the Lake Charles area has largely escaped that devastating impact from the storm surge. Um, the rivers are, of course, um, at, at higher levels than they usually are, but, but this storm will be, will be known in the first place for the extensive wind damage that it has caused. Right, so it has caused extensive damage, not the massive storm surge, that was expected. How does it compare to Hurricane Katrina? Well, Hurricane Katrina, that was back in 2005. That was a Category 5 hurricane, the most intense type of hurricane that, that we classify. Um, that specific event was far more devastating in the sense that more than a thousand people lost their lives in the storm. And thinking back, that was, of course, the result of widespread flooding. There were, in, in fact, some um, engineering failures in New Orleans that resulted in, a, in, a, in, in this widespread flooding. So there, there the storm surge was far more devastating, and uh, the flooding itself from the intense rainfall was far more devastating. So Hurricane Katrina remains the most costly hurricane um, in terms of the, the, the historical record in the United States. So tell me, what actually causes a hurricane? Well, it's a very intense storm that forms um, over the tropical oceans. So it's effectively a low pressure system that grows in the presence of very high sea surface temperatures and lots of water vapor um, into a tropical cyclone. Um, the categories of hurricanes are, are largely allocated according to the wind speeds that the system generates. So a uh, hurricane, uh, category 4 hurricane, such as Hurricane uh, Laura, um, that is associated with, with wind speeds of about 210 kilometers an hour. Sure. A hurricane, a category 5 hurricane, can generate wind speeds in the order of 250 kilometers an hour, to give you an idea. Uh, so these are sustained winds. 
Uh, and one can just think how, how tremendous the damage is when, when a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane makes landfall. Absolutely. So we know that hurricanes have occurred in that area. You were saying that uh, 1856 there was a similar strength um, hurricane in that area of Louisiana. So hurricanes are normal. But we also know that when it comes to climate change and the impact that it has, it tends to intensify existing weather systems. Do you see what's happened with Hurricane Laura as uh, an example of how climate change is impacting the way hurricanes are formed? Or is it just one of those intense hurricanes that comes along every hundred years or so? Well, the fact that there's a very similar hurricane on the record um, for specifically Louisiana in 1856 shows us that these types, um, these types of extreme events are of course part of the natural um, variability in the climate system. So we cannot attribute the occurrence of this specific category for Oregon to climate change. But if we look at the statistics, so if we look at the last 40 years of data, the period during which we have very good data from the world's meteorological satellites, we can detect a systematic increase in the number of Category 4 and Category 5 hurricanes across the planet, and also for the specific part of the North Atlantic Ocean. And then as we, as we look at the evidence that we have available of, of future climate change, then climate science is quite clear that as the planet continues to warm, um, it's in fact very simple. There is more and more energy available to fill Category 4 and Category 5 hurricane. So indeed, the expectation is that in a changing climate, we can also expect to move, we can expect further increases in the occurrence of Category 4 and Category 5 hurricanes in most of the world's uh, tropical ocean basins. Thank you so much for your insights this evening, Professor of Climatology at the Global Change Institute here at Witts University in Johannesburg. Professor Francois Engelbrecht, thanks very much for your views. And of course, just to recap, um, Hurricane Laura has been downgraded to a tropical storm. Uh, massive wind damage in its path of destruction, reports of three people dead.